Hello, I'm Jacob from Intrepid Codeworks, and today we are going to look at the normal distribution, the standard normal distribution, and how I can use those to make a table of standardized scores, also called z-scores and probabilities, which correspond to those scores. This is called a z-score. While I talk, I'm going to go ahead and graph out an example of the standard normal distribution. You do not need to worry much about the formula either. The main concepts I want you to take away are some of the definitions of the normal and standard normal distributions and the z-table. We'll be doing more with z-scores next time, but for now, all we're going to do is get their corresponding probabilities and compile that into a table. We will then take that table and then put it into a CSV file for future use. It's not completely necessary to calculate your own table. There's plenty of fantastic tables out there, so if you don't want to, you don't have to. But I personally like uh, the demonstration and there is educational value in seeing that this is something that is completely approachable on your own. You don't have to trust a table, you can derive your own. This will also be in an easy to use format for our Python coding in the future as well as this is just one long list that we can easily search through. So far we've defined a list X, a list Y, an iterator that starts at negative 4. Once you see the distribution it'll make more sense as to why we picked 4 to negative 4 and we just increment by 0.01. We defined a couple of constants. Uh, we're defining e, we're defining pi, we're defining a constant that is 1 over the square root of 2 pi. We are doing all of this so that we can show you the formula for the standard normal distribution. I'll go over that a little bit more once we have our visual up. So now we're going to go ahead and calculate our y values. To do that we'll go ahead and make a loop, go through uh, every value of x with a as our as our step through that and then we'll define an exponent. Our exponent is negative a squared divided by 2. Now we'll go ahead and define our distribution formula. Our distribution formula will just be our constant times e to the power of our exponent. And once we have that we can just append that value to y and this will give us the uh, data that we want to graph. A couple of notes about the code here. As much as I can, I'm avoiding using additional Python modules. When I do need to import a module, I want to do it right before I use it so that you can see where it is used better. I will also try to only use one module at a time so there is as little confusion as possible. Typically you want all of your imports to be at the top of your uh, script for consistency and programming. Consistency is actually really important, so we'll want to be as consistent as possible. You'd also want to have comments to make sure your code is clear. Though we are light on comments mainly because this code is expected to be viewed in the context of this video. So we've imported matplotlib.plyplot as plt, and now we're going to do plt.plot x and y, the two lists we compiled earlier, and then we're going to do just plt.show. And this will give us our first look at our standard normal distribution. So a regular normal distribution is a type of distribution which is characterized by being symmetrical. In other words, one side is the mirror image of the other side. It is also characterized by having the mean, mode, and median being equal to one another. This is most often thought of as your typical bell curve. As it is symmetrical, it does not have skew, or a skew is zero. Also, uh, the ketosis of normal distribution is 3. Sometimes we'll look at the Pearson's ketosis being set as 0 so as to make it easier to compare to other distributions. This is the standard normal distribution, in which case the mean is set to 0 and the standard deviation is set to 1. The total area underneath this curve is also equal to 1. Plus and minus one standard deviation accounts for 68% of this distribution. Plus or minus two standard deviations is about 95% of this distribution. Plus or minus three standard deviations is 99.7% of this distribution. This is called the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. Let's go ahead and comment out showing our plot because that will stop our code in progress. Now we're going to go ahead and import scipy.integrate. I go ahead and link the documents below as well. Here's a, a copy and paste of the link in the code too. Make sure you check that this is up to date because this is one of the more fiddly modules in Python and a lot of times it'll end up breaking. So we're going to go and run our code real quick to make sure that it works. 
If there is an error, use the pip command in a console to go ahead and update SciPy. There are a lot of good tutorials out there on how to use pip. We are going to be using SciPy for its integrate function. This is a concept in calculus. You don't need to know how to integrate for this video. All you need to understand is that we're taking that same function we did up above and we are calculating the volume, the area underneath that curve. We're going to look at that volume from a range of negative infinity. To define that, we'll just do negative infinity equals negative float inf. That's a nice function there. And we'll just go ahead and for now look at the upper limit of zero. This will be a good way to check that we got everything right. So we'll go ahead and define a function f of x and we'll rewrite what we put up above. We'll have our constant, which is one over the square root of two pi. And we already defined pi up above. We also already defined e, so we'll define c, our constant, and then we'll define our exponent as negative x squared divided by two. This will let us put together our formula for the standard normal curve. And we'll just define this as our constant times e to the power of our exponent. Now we can just have this f of x function return our standard normal curve. Now we'll define our probability and our error because the integrate function returns both the value and the error as uh, we'll find that as scipy.integrate dot quad with our function f, with our lower limit being negative infinity and our upper limit being z. Then we'll go ahead and print out our probability rounded to five decimal places. Go ahead and run that and we get 0.5, which is exactly half of our distribution, which is perfect. Look at our normal curve again and we'll see that's what we should be getting. Let's go ahead and comment our plot back out and let's move on to making our actual z table. Let's start off by making an empty list naming it z table and then we'll go ahead and do for row in x and have our probability and error equal the scipy.integrate.quad. This is how you integrate using scipy. Put our function f in there going from negative infinity to our row that we're in. Now we'll want to go ahead and pin both the value of our row and the probability associated with it to our z table. We'll want to go ahead and round this to five decimal places. And just to make sure this is working, let's go ahead and print out the row and our probability. Again, round this to five decimal places and hit save and run and we should see a whole bunch of z scores and probabilities print out. We can go ahead and scroll through. We see 1.96 is equal to 0.975 and we see that 0 is equal to 0.5. This tells us we're on the right track and we can go ahead and move on to actually writing out our z table. This is similar to what we do to get our data in in previous tutorials. We'll start by importing CSV and then with open ztable.csv, that's what we'll name it. We'll open that as a write by denoting w and we'll just keep the new line blank. We'll call this z table file. We'll define z underscore table underscore writer, which equals csv dot writer with our z table file and our delimiter will be a comma. Now we will go ahead and fill up this csv file by using a for loop. We'll do for row in z table and we will append it using the z table writer. So z table writer dot write row with a row in. This will give us the uh, z table as a CSV file in the same directory. So let's go ahead and open that up and take a quick look. I'm going to use Notepad to open that up and we should see a document about 800 lines long going from negative four to positive four and going from almost zero to almost one. So that does it for going over the normal table, the standardized normal table and how to calculate the z table. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Our next video will cover using the Z-Test itself.